what we're going to do now is go to the third part of today's lecture and that is looking at in a little bit more detail some examples of how blockchain is being used in global supply chains today let's get into this shall we Welcome to a comparison of Walmart, Carrier 4, Maersk, UPS and Pfizer. Now I'm not going to go all through all the details here, but I just want to let you know that currently these companies have integrated blockchains into their supply chains. And basically, since they're running global supply chains, you can say it's an application of blockchain to global supply chains. How are they doing that? So what type of blockchain do they have? Well, Walmart has a blockchain for food. Carrier 4 has for food. Maersk container shipping. UPS for transportation and logistics services. Pfizer for pharmaceutical. Have they relied on a consultant? Yes, they have. Are they large? Yes, they are large consultants. Yes, IBM is the big one for Walmart, Carrier 4 and Maersk. Yeah. I, there is Beta is applying it for UPS and then the link lab is applying it for Pfizer. Okay, what is the infrastructure? All of these are applying Hyperledger Fabric or a private blockchain, especially Walmart, Courier 4 and Maersk, whereas UPS is using Ethereum smart contracts and Pfizer is using Medilever, private. Ah, okay. So what is the key benefit that they're really focusing on? For Walmart, it is food trust and Courier 4 is food trust. For Maersk, it's really trade lens. And for UPS, it's about automated determination about where things are at any point in time in the logistics chain. And for fights, that's really focused on making more transparent their healthcare system. And a little bit more detail, that platform is creating the following benefits. As you can see, for Walmart, it's about greater food safety, improving the flow of the food supply chain. Again, for Courier 4, traceability, transparency, safety. For Maersk, it's about access to real-time data. Again, traceability of where the physical flows of their logistics are where the containers are at any one time around the world. Wow, UPS is focusing on similar to MERS because UPS is really focused on logistics again. Then we have FITSA. Again, this is very big on making sure that there is no counterfeit drugs in their supply chain system. And that is a huge, huge, huge benefit that FITSA is focusing on and trying to get out of this blockchain that they have implemented. Ah, so they had first pilot projects as early as 2016. 2019 was the most recent one rolled out by Maersk. And there's uh, the results of the pilot tests. And most of them have cited reduced they've reduced the duration to trace the source of food. That's definitely for Walmart and Courier for. For Maersk, they've reduced the transit time for shipment to the US by up to 40%. For UPS, they've improved the efficiency in terms of creating optimal routes. And for fights, they've resolved misalignments by connecting the disparate par parties on a common blockchain-based network. Wow. Okay, so lots of talk here. I just want to let you know that you know, these big companies out there are pushing and pushing and they've got some early wins, early benefits by applying the blockchain. But is there a little person a little in this space that has benefited from using the blockchain in their supply chain? Let me give you a simple example that you might be able to feel or come to home with. I just want to leave you with this final case study and this was sourced from the Blockchain Institute of Technology and I'm using this because I took one of their courses and this was a case study in their course. And this is an example of a winery that is using the blockchain or a network of wineries in Italy and they're using the blockchain 
to trace their wine back to the original farms that the wine was grown and bottled. Ah, so you could actually go to this YouTube site and when you buy a bottle of wine, there is a history at the back of the bottle and you scan the QR code and it, it will tell you the history of the wine, the type of grapes that have gone into the wine and when the grapes were picked and when the wine was bottled and how long it took to mature. Wow, it's amazing that you can do that these days. And the whole reason that they're doing this is to give you, the consumer, a greater sense of ownership or a greater sense of involvement in the making of the product that you are consuming. They are doing this with turkeys that are being sold in the US and you get a turkey, you scan the QR code and it will go, you'll go to the website and you can actually trace that turkey that you bought back to the exact farm where that turkey came from. Wow. So this, these are the end benefits that networks of various farms, wineries are using the blockchain to enhance the marketing of their product to consumers. Now that may not be the, the initial motivation for a large supply chain or a global supply chain company to use the blockchain. But this is more a marketing ploy to provide added value to the consumers when they buy your product. Wow. Let's summarize this, shall we? I've looked at three different areas of the blockchain. I've taken you through the specific technology. Okay, now be careful. The specific technology is to do with cryptography, which you really don't need to know much about, but just appreciate that that has been around for a long time. Number two, you need to understand oracles, and that is the source of external data that creates specific gates that help smart contracts to work. And also then there's a consensus algorithm that's very important, and that's the blockchain technology. Next, I took you through the different benefits of the blockchain that they can provide to the supply chain. I outlined the benefits in terms of D-A-A-T-T, -T, okay, documentation, authenticity, audit trail, okay, then you've got the trust, you've got the traceability, ah, right. and then I took you through the pain points. In other words, the pain points is basically the application of benefits, which is kind of like theory, what we expect the benefits to be, but the pain points are them in real time. When you go and talk to people in the supply chain, these are the things they want solved. And I looked at a few surveys to show you which pain points are more important than others. They're not all equal. The benefits are not all equal. So you, if you are a consultant, you want to focus on getting small wins rather than trying to solve everything for your client. And then finally, I gave you some examples of where blockchains have been rolled out in global supply chains today. I hope by going through this series of lectures on blockchain in the supply chain, you have a better appreciation of when and where blockchain could be deployed. This is O'Connor. Welcome to Blockchain for the Supply Chain. See you in the class and keep blockchaining away. Bye for now.